not a new chapter. Um, welcome to your session 22. We, today we continue with what we've been doing. So this is just to assist you with preparing for doing your assignment four, which is also due on the second, but with the possibility of an extension. It might be extended by another week because assignment two and three are still open. They close on the second. So assignment four might also be extended with another week. Um, but I, I always feel that you need to do your first submission as early as possible so that you have a feel of the type of questions that are asked so that then when you practice you already practice with your mind knowing what type of questions you will tackle when you look at your assignment as well and then use these activities and plus the recordings for the content and the activities that we did there um, to assist you with doing your um, your assignment as well so Let's get to it. So up today I'm not going to discuss anything content. We're just going to go straight into doing the activities. The couple, the first couple of activities, we're going to do them together as a group. We'll, we'll answer the questions and then I will give you time as we go along so that you can also try and do it on your own. And then we come back and do the feedback. Um, I hope that is cool with everybody else. So we'll first start with the activities that relates to confidence intervals. I do not want to combine the two chapters together because also I think when you write your assignment, you first get the questions relating to confidence interval, then later on you get the, the rest of the other questions that relates to the other chapter that you're doing. So they don't mix them. They don't try to confuse you because also in the exam you do get it in that manner where they don't mix the questions up and um, around you get them in an order that they appear in your study guide as well so study unit one follow study unit two and like, like that so i did it that way so the first 10 questions or eight questions will be relating to confidence intervals and then we will do the other 10 or eight questions relating to hypothesis testing. I've sent you guys um, the table. So for all the activities today, we are going to use the table that I sent you, which is called STA 20 tutorial letter instruction to online exam. This is the, the a document that was sent to last year students who were writing their exam. So the table here, has um oh the this tutorial letter has several tables so we're going to use this table so the t test on this one has three digit whereas the one that i was using on the tutorial letter 101 for 2020 it had four digits so it creates some confusions because when when you're working with different types of tables or decimals when you drop decimal you are increasing the digits when you use the whole or four decimals. The answer that you will get will be different to the one who worked with three decimals as well. So to make sure that everybody or standardized, everybody works on the same table, same um, uh, uh, documentation, then we're going to use this tutorial letter. Also, when you go write the exam, I'm hoping that the same tutorial letter will be sent to you, but it will have 2021 information linked to it, but the table will remain exactly the same. It will not change. So we're going to use this. So week in, week out from now until you go write the exam. OK, so that is that. Let's, let's, which tutorial letter is this on? Um, I've I've sent it on on WhatsApp, so I can oh. I can also send it through the um my Unisa as well. So this I shared it on WhatsApp. Um, I will also share it via my Unisa so that everybody else 
also who's not on WhatsApp can also have the same information as well. So let's get to it. So. You said you sent it on the WhatsApp group as a. Um, yes. Uh, I got it. I think I got it. There is one person who also responded, so you can just click on that response that yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. question that you asked. So when you click there, it will take you to the original PDF that I sent. OK, so since we're going to do this together, you can we can all we will do two questions together and then I will leave you to do the, the rest of the questions on your own. So a statistic practitioner took a random sample of 50 observations from a population with a standard deviation of 25 and a sample mean of 100. The 95% confidence interval of the population is, and we need to calculate or we need to find the, or construct a confidence interval. What is it that we are given? Who can say what are we given on this? in order for us to be able to answer this question. Mm. N is 50. We, we give an N of 50. What else? Population standard deviation 25. Population standard deviation, which is sigma, which is 25. So therefore, sigma is known. And what do we know when sigma is known? Sorry? When sigma is known, or population standard deviation known, what do we use? Are we using Z, or are we going to use T to find the critical value? Use Z. We're going to use Z. And therefore, we're going to find the critical value of Z alpha divided by 2. Uh, what else are we given? X bar 100. We're given X bar, which is the mean of 100. And what else are we given? Ninety-five percent confidence interval. So we given zero comma nine five confidence level, which is one minus alpha. And what will be our alpha? If we move alpha this side, it becomes positive, and we move zero comma nine five to the other side, it's one minus zero comma nine five. And therefore, our alpha will be 0, 0,05. And since our alpha is 0, 0,05, what do we need to do? We need to go find the critical value, ne? which is Z alpha divided by 2. Um, just repeating this, but you probably by now you know what uh, our critical value is. Z alpha divided by 2, which will be Z of 0, 0,025 zero what is our critical value 1.96 yeah 1.96 that's correct so by now you now know that our critical value is 1 comma 96 plus or minus if i can put it that way then since we need to construct a confidence level so we use the formula x bar plus or minus the critical value Z alpha divided by 2 times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by N. So our X bar, we said it's 100, isn't it? Plus or minus your critical value, you said it's 1,96. Your standard, standard error, Population standard deviation is 25 divided by the square root of n, n is 50. Do the calculation. You can first do the calculation for the margin of error. 
which let's see if we're doing it together. I'll do it from here. Let's write all this. So I have 1,96 times into bracket fraction 25 divided by the square root of 50. With my arrows, close bracket equals 6,9296. I'm just going to keep it to four, at four decibels. 100 plus or minus 6,9296. 6, 96. I'm just going to keep it at that. Then expand 100 minus 6,9296 and 100 plus 6,9296. Did you do the calculations? I'm lazy to do that. I'm just going to use the formula. Do you also get the same answer as I do? Yeah. Which is mm -hmm. 93, 93,07. Uh, if I look at the answer, it's in two decimals, so I can also keep two decimals. And if I go to the plus side, you just add a hundred, so it's one hundred, one hundred six comma nine two nine. Nine two nine and two decimal, it will be nine three. Therefore, the answer is option number one. Happy? Yeah. Is it just move your just move your calculator a little bit? Okay, any question? Are we happy? Happy. Yes. Happiness. Okay, next. Sorry. I'm going to give you time to look at the question and then we will do it together. Just read through it. Okay, what are we given? on this question. We are given our mean. I'm oh, sorry. We are given our mean bar, which is 10. What else? Sample variance of 9. We are given the sample variance of 9. And what do we need to do with the sample variance? Find square root of nine. We need to find the standard deviation, which is the square root of nine, which is equals to three. What else are we given? Sample size. We're given sample size of 16 and our confidence level of 0, 0,99 equals 1 minus alpha. What will be the value of your alpha? Alpha will be 1 minus 0, 0,99, which is equals to 0, 0,01. Now we need to find the critical value. 
z alpha divided by 2, which is z of 0, 0,01 divided by 2, which is a z of 0, comma, what is z of 0, comma, 0, 1? Z double zero. Double zero five. And by two will be double zero five. Double zero. Double zero five. Okay. So what will be our critical value? Do you know? Remember I told you that you must do a summary table for yourself. Did you guys do that? Where you keep your your critical values, because if you don't have that summary table that you created, you will do the long route like me and go look for 0, 0,05 inside here, which will be 0, 0,05 somewhere there. And it's going to be 2.58. 2.58. That is our critical value. Our critical value will be 2.58. So now we can go and calculate our confidence. Uh, what's wrong with this? All these things that we just did. That's wrong. Do you know why yeah. it's wrong? Because uh, is it not because the uh, what is it? It's unknown. Something. Because the population standard deviation is unknown. So it means the way we went and found the critical value, it was all wrong. So we need to use T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom, which is N minus one. So which then T of 0, 0,01 divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom of our n is 16 minus 1 gives us t of what will be 0, 0,005 and our degrees of freedom is 15. So we need to pay attention to the statements given. So now we need to go to the T table, not the, not the Z table, because we're using T. We go to the T table, we're looking for T of 0, 0,005 and the degrees of freedom of 15. 0, 0,05 is the last column. 2.947. And that is the value we're looking for. 2.947. 2.947. That is our critical value. So mean bar plus or minus T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom and S divided by the square root of n. Substitute the values and calculate. So our x bar is 10 plus or minus our critical value. We did go find it. It was 2.947 times our critical value. It's 3 divided by the square root of n. In 16. Go ahead and calculate the margin of error. Two point nine four seven times three divided by the square root of I'm going to leave it at four decimal. I'm only going to round off when I get to the final answer. So you can also keep it as you see it 2.21025. So that will be 
10 plus or minus 2.210. To five, so you can split it and do the lower boundary first, 2.21025, and then go to the upper boundary, which is 10 plus 2.21025. Doing the calculation. Value 10 minus and the answer rounded to two decimal 7.79. That's the 7.79 if I round it to two decimal and in the positive side, I will get we just add 10. 12.21, round it off to two decimal, we left with 12.21. 12.21, which option means three. option yeah. three is the right answer. Gudo? Happy? Yes. Yeah, so far. I think, Lizzie, we're happy when you're doing this, no? <laughs> now it's your chance to do it yourself. Okay, so uh, we can do this one also together because this one is the proportion. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to those questions. So we know that for this one, we were able to know what to use because the population standard deviation is known. We used alpha. The second one, they gave us the sample variant. So we knew that when the sample variance is given, therefore the population standard deviation is unknown, then we use T. For proportions, remember if they didn't give you the proportion, sample proportion, they will give you observations for the proportion, satisfying that divide by the sample size will give you the sample proportion. And for the proportion, we always use Z. So you must always remember that. So what are we given on this question? We are given the population size, which is N25, which we can just ignore because it doesn't add any value in what we're going to be doing. So we can just also ignore that part. We are given the sample size N of 600. We are given our X observations from that sample. So there is those who opposed where X, X is equals to 120. Therefore, we should be able to calculate P, which is 100 or X divided by N, which will be 100 divided by oh, 120, because that's 120, 120 divided by 600. 0 0.2. 0 0.2, that is our proportion. We are also given 0 0.90, which is 1 minus alpha. So our alpha is 0 0.10. So since we're doing proportion, we're going to use Z, alpha divided by 2, which is Z of 0 0.10 divided by 2, which is Z of 0 0.05. Now, do you know what critical value is that? It is one of those exceptions. So we go to the Z negative side of the table. Remember when we look for 0, 0,05, 
we're going to find it between those two values and it will be 1,645. So I'm going to repeat again on the side somewhere you can do what we call one minus alpha, which will be your 0 0.99, 0 0.95, 0.90, 0 0.90, which are those that I, I know by now. So we know that this alpha will be 0 0.01. This will be 0 0.05. This will be 0 0.10. And what else we know, if we want alpha divided by 2, this will be 0, 0, 0,005. And this will be 0, 0,025. And this will be 0, 0,05. And we know that if we're looking for Z alpha divided by 2, then we are looking for for this uh what did we find okay for this one is 1.96 and this is 2.58 and for a 90 is 1 comma i am missing one of them i think it's the 98 um, okay, so let's let's look at this one zero comma nine eight it's zero comma zero two, which will be zero comma zero one, and the critical value will be two comma three three. So that is the other one. So you must also be able for when you go to the confidence levels, you must be able to find the same. So for a 0, 0,05, where it's just alpha, it will be 1,96. Uh, no, I'm lying. Sorry, my bad. I'm very, I'm a liar. It's 1, 645 uh, Z alpha of 0, 0,1. What am I doing? Sorry, wait, please don't shoot the messenger. I'm trying to get this is that it will be 2, 33 3 because that's where you will find the same critical value for Z alpha. 2,33 and for 0, 0,05, where is 0, 0,05? It's 1,645 and for 0, 0,10, we we'll need to go and find that one. 0, 0,1, 101010. It's two comma three three. Then I got that one wrong. Then I got this one wrong. Oh, am I daydreaming? Oh, sorry. That was right. That was right. Two comma three three. This is one zero, not. Zero one one zero one zero will be somewhere here. One zero, it will be that one, uh, which is one comma two eight. One comma two eight and
for 0, 0, 0,01, it will be uh, 0, 0, 0,02. You need to find 0, 0,02. 0, 0,02. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Anyway. I'm not I'm not sure whether they will give you for a 98 but those are the those are the common ones you will you will find or you will use so this you will use now for confidence interval for confidence intervals and for hypothesis testing when it is not equal for this ones you will use when it is greater than or less than for only for hypothesis testing. So I'm already I've already did the summary table for you, so I'm not going to go back to this. So you must have it somewhere where we're going to use it as a reference. You don't have to always go to look up the values. So we're going to use this. OK, only for Z, only for Z, for, for T, we'll have to go and find the values. So I'm deleting it. I hope you wrote it down. If you didn't write it, you can pause the video when you get to this point and, and write the, 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 the table. Okay. okay. I took longer now. I'm trying to get you a table okay so now let's answer the question we are calculating proportions so this will be p plus or minus the formula plus or minus our critical value z alpha divided by two and p one minus p which is our standard error in this instance we don't use the populations we use the sample because we have only the sample information substitute the value 0, 0.0 plus or minus we are oh gosh now you need to tell me wh what critical value did we say for 0, 0.05 1 comma 1.645 1.645 times 0, 0,2 times 1 minus 0, 0,2 divide by our n of 600 close bracket i am just going to do the whole equation since i've used up most of the time so point two, I'm not going to start calculating the margin of error first. I'm just going to go straight and do the whole calculations. 6.645 times square root of fraction point two times one minus point two close bracket divide by 600. And I need to go close the bigger bracket. Okay. Then equal the on the lower side I get zero comma seven uh, one seven three one. Zero comma one seven three one. I'm gonna leave it to four decimals. So go into the plus side. I get 0, 0,269. 0, 0,22. Uh, is it 22? 2269. Just option one. That will be option one. Okay. So.
there is your exercise. You can do this one on your own. I'm going to give you five minutes. Identify what you are given. Find the critical values. And substitute. Use the right formula to substitute. When you're done, please let me know. Don't be quiet. I just want to know how far you are. And uh, you can also post your answer on the chat. You guys want food? Wait, I, I didn't pause. Wait, Lizzie, I think I'm finished. Okay. It's I'll me. wait for the others. Um, can I, am I allowed to post the answer? Yes, you can. Ha. Thank you for posting the, the screen. I hope it helps. Can I see the answers, please?
Oh, sorry, I'm muted. Okay, we're given all these values. Uh, your critical value will be? 1,96. 1, 1,96. I'm sorry, I was writing, but I was speaking and I muted myself. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. Okay, so now we need to calculate z alpha divided by 2 times the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Our mean is 120 plus or minus our critical value, 1,96 times standard deviation 20 divided by the square root of n 30. What do you get? What did you get? So the the, the one after the, the plus sign or the minus sign is 7,1569. That, in, that excludes the 120, if you're looking for that, just the one after the this S, side. this, okay. that term, correct. 120 plus or minus one, you said uh, it? No, 7,1569. 7, 7,1569. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 120 minus 7,1569, and we do the upper side, 120 plus, Seven comma one five six nine, and the option will be two. Option two. Option two. Happiness. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. The next question, the sample of 25, they give you the average time take, it takes 30 minutes. They just give you all that information. And they also tell you that the population standard deviation is 20. Find the critical value. That's all what they want. So are you using Z or T? Critical value. Are, T. You to, are you going to find T. T alpha divided by two or are you going to use Z alpha divided by two? T. Why T? Sig uh, well, you use T if sigma is unknown. What is that? Ah, you go and spoil it now. Thought I was on something. <laughs> So you're going to use Z because the sigma is known. So remember that sigma is population. Population parameters, we use Greek letters. So that is your population standard deviation. You're going to find Z alpha divided by two. And what will be your critical value? This should be quick and easy because you have a reference table. Option four. Will be option four. Because this will be your Z of zero comma. Your alpha here will be zero comma one zero and alpha of zero comma one zero. If we divide alpha by two, we get zero comma zero five and the critical value will be one comma six four five. A random sample of 100 results in a sample mean of 100. The population standard deviation is known to be 35. What is the margin of error for estimating a 99% confidence interval? I 
are we using Z to find the critical value or are we using T? Are we going to use T alpha divided by two or are we going to use Z alpha divided by two? Okay, the, the standard population standard deviation is also known, so it should be Z. It should be Z. So if that is Z, then find the standard error. Oh, sorry, the, stand, the margin of error. And do you remember what the margin of error is? If I have the formula that looks like this. Come on, why am I using S? You know, this will be the formula that you get. Calculate the margin of error. What, what, which part of the equation are you using? Or the part of the formula you using to calculate After this? Plus. After plus minus. You're going to use only that part. Then calculate the margin of error. Done. Are you done? I've what is your so critical value? Critical value value is 2.58. 2.58 times your standard deviation. It's 35 divided by the square root of 100. That gives you 9.03. 2.58 times, I'm just passing time, times 35 divided by the square root of 100. It's 9.03. Okay. What are we given here? We are given the observations, so it's going to be the proportion. It's going to be proportions because also in the question it says the proportions. So. What do you need to do? Is to find. Your proportion, which is Z alpha divided by two, you need to find what your critical value is, and you need to multiply by so what are we given in the question? We're given our N, you given your P, which is your proportion. You don't have to go and calculate it. You are given your 0 0.95 confidence level and you can go find the the proportion but read the question carefully it says they are looking for the upper limit and if we're looking for the upper limit which part do we leave out which part do we remove the minus we're going to remove the minus we're only interested in the plus side so you can do that calculation.
Are we done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, let's do the answer. Sorry, say again, Lizzie. Okay. Lizzie, you're still waiting for us or we're waiting for you? I'm waiting for you. I thought someone said just a bit. No. So I was waiting for that person to, to say they're done. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so how do we answer this? Um, our P is 0 0.48 plus our critical value 1,96 so even though they asking us for the upper limit as long as it's confidence intervals we're going to divide alpha by 2 so it's 1,96 times the square root of 0, 0,48 times 1 minus 0, 0,48 divided by our n is 500. So what is your upper limit? Did you all get the same answer? And 0.48 plus 1,96 times the square root of 0.48 times 1 minus 0.48 divided by 500 close bracket equal. Did you all get the same? Zero comma five two three eight. Option number three. Yes. Yes. Okay. The last, 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 last question, and then we do hypothesis. You are also given the population standard deviation on this, so it means you are going to use plus or minus z alpha divided by 2 times the standard error. So when you read your questions, in order for you to differentiate whether you are calculating for the mean or for the proportion, 
it is information given. So for the mean, you will be given things like standard deviation, the mean value or the average. Then you know that you're calculating the mean. And you will need to know for the mean, you have two options. When the population standard deviation is known and when the population standard deviation is unknown. And today we didn't cover much in terms of when the population standard deviation is unknown. Let me know when you're done. <clears throat> Are we done? Yes. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> How did you answer it? If you hope so. What is your mean? Your X bar? X bar is 78. 78 plus or minus your critical value? Of 1.96. 1.96. And your standard deviation? 21 divided by the square root of 300. And if we use the calculator, 78 minus 1.96 times the square root of 21 divided by 300. Close bracket equal. Lizzie, your square root is over the entire term. It must just be over the 300. Now the square root is. That. Nice kids, Etienne. I'm, I'm already having calculator problems. I'm, it's very personal for me at the moment. I don't know why I'm struggling so much with my calculator. I'm fighting with it. Happy? Donkey. There we go. And the answer is 75.62. And if I need to find the other value, I just go and change the plus 80.38, which is option the number two, yes. Two. I'm so hooked on this calculator that Lazy sent. That's it's, it's amazing. It is. You see how quickly it does everything yes. for you. Uh, okay, so we're done with confidence intervals. So by now you should have a feel in terms of the type of questions you can get and answer. You should be able to answer any question relating to confidence interval with ease by now. So let's look at hypothesis testing. More questions. Um, I'm going to start with this question because I think previously 
I even cut it off the video then so that we don't have to come back to it on that uh, last week's question. So I've added it to this week's exercise as well because I think there was an error, an error on the question and also because we did it in a hurry without explaining a lot of things. So there was so much happening at the same time. So I've included it again. So with this, uh, the next hour, we will do hypothesis testing. So just to remember with hypothesis testing, the sign that goes there doesn't matter. We can have the less than or equal, greater than or equal, it means nothing. Or we can just have an equal sign there. You must just remember that. The most important sign that you always, always need to make sure that it's correct, it is the alternative. Because with the alternative sign, it will tell you whether you're doing a one-tail test, a two-tail test. It will tell you where your region of rejection will be on the left or on the right, or whether if it's a two-tail, whether you, it's on both so that when you make conclusion using the critical values, you do not get confused. Otherwise, if you are using the p-value, you also need to know that if it's less than, the value you find on the table will be the value of your critical value, unless if your z-value is a positive z-value, then you need to do one minus the positive value you find on the table and so forth. So that sign is very, very important. So based on the question that was asked, so the question says in a sample of 36, the sample mean is 84. It is also known that the population standard deviation is 16. You are required to use this information to test the hypothesis that the mean population is more than or it's greater than or equals to 80, where the alternative will say it is less than. Okay, so we need to find the incorrect statement in this. What are we given? The sample size N, 36. What else? We given the mean sample, 84. We are also told that the population standard deviation, which is sigma, is 16. So therefore, the population standard deviation is is known in this. So therefore, it means for anything that we do, we're going to use the Z test statistic, or we're going to find the Z critical value, or we're going to use the, the Z table for whatever questions that might follow. Now, the first statement they are asking you is, based on this information that you know, is this test a lower test, test statistic, tail test statistic. So if you can remember what's what, just always draw yourself a picture and say, this is my lower limit. This is my upper limit. So in this side, on this side, we're going to use the less than because our region of rejection will be going in the less that direction. The arrow is facing that direction. That is why it's the less than. On this side, the arrow is going that side, so therefore it will be greater than on that side, which is the upper side. Because we know that this is the lower because it will have the minus this side and we will have the plus this side way because we know that in the middle, that is where zero is for our standardized normal distribution table. So the question here is asking, based on this information, is this the lower or upper area? Or upper Z test? That's a question that I'm asking you guys. It's the lower table. It will be the lower, so therefore that will be correct. Uh, then the next question is asking you to calculate the test statistics. Do you still remember how to find the test statistics? 
your z stat you need to calculate it which will be your sample mean minus your population mean divided by the standard error which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n substitute the value and calculate and let me know if you get it correct so our sample mean is 84 minus our population mean is always given in the question is 80 and our standard deviation divided by our standard deviation is 16 divided by the square root of our sample size is 36. What is the answer that you get? One plus five. I'm not going to do the calculation. So the answer there is one comma five zero because we're going to be going to the Z table. I'm leaving it as two decimals. Option three is asking at 10% level of significance. The rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the p value is less than or equals to 0, 0,1. Remember, the decision says if p value is less, if the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. That's the rule. And that is what that is saying. It's just repeating the same rule. Is that the right rule? Is it correct? Does whatever statement that they are saying, does it contradict the rule that I just said is the rule that you need to use when we make a decision? It's correct. It is correct. Because they, all what they're doing there is just repeating the rule to say if our alpha, which is 10%, at this point we know what our alpha is. If alpha is 10%, are we, and the p-value that we're going to get, if it's going to be less than the value of alpha, are we going to reject that? And that is the rule. That's correct. The way they speak at the rule. Yes. Does the fact that it says less than or equal to, does that not change the weight of the answer. I'm, I'm just asking. No. It, it makes no. It makes no difference. No, it makes no difference. Okay. Okay. Um, I know that in some of the notes, actually, I think they say when it is greater than or equal, we reject, or when it, because if it's at this, if it's on the top here, yeah, whether it goes this way, we're still going to reject because it's the less than. Um, if it was greater than and it falls in this side, we will not be rejecting something like that. So it will not be. Oh, sorry. Here I'm talking about the critical value, not the p value. But yes, so um, I don't think it will be a problem whether it's great and less than or equal and exactly. But I know that at some point on the notes, I said if it's greater than or equal, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. But this is just for them to state in the rule that when it's less than or equal, are we going to reject the null hypothesis? It's just the rule. Number four, Um, it's asking you to find the p-value. So now we've calculated the z-test. You need to take that z-test, go find the p-value on the table. Remember the rule that, remember the information you know from the normal probability table that the table contains the less than values or even the sampling distribution where we said the table, the cumulative normal, uh, cumulative standardized normal distribution table contains the probability of a less than. So here we have a less than. So it means we're going to find the p-value, which will be the probability of a less than value. So we need to use that one comma 
it's positive, so we need to go to the positive side and look for 1,50. So we go to the positive, we look for 1,50. And since, remember, we're only looking for this margin, this small area. We're not interested in this shaded area because this 0, 0,9332 it is the whole shaded area, but we only interested in the small portion of it. So we go into say one minus 0, 0,9332 in order for us to find the p value. And what do you get? So here you have to say your p value will be one minus 0, 0,9332. 332. What do you get? Point zero six six eight. Zero point zero six six eight. So this eight. is the this is the wrong answer. Which is the incorrect answer. Because what I did with this one, if you take this multiply by two, it will give you that answer. It was if this was it would have been correct if it was a two tail equation, then that would have been correct. But that is the incorrect one. Number five, it says at 10% significance level, the null hypothesis is rejected. So take your p value and take your 10% and check whether are we rejecting the null hypothesis. So all what you do is you say 0, 0,0668 and you evaluate 0, 0,10. Is it bigger or less? If the sign is less, if 0, 0,068 is less than 0, 0,1, then we reject H0. And that's what that statement says. Is that correct? And that is correct. Last time we met, we had two options that were incorrect. It was the upper here and it was the lower there. So we cannot have two incorrect answers. Uh, sorry, I need to answer. My phone. Okay. Moving on. A laboratory tested a random sample of chicken eggs and found that the mean amount of cholesterol per egg is 235 milligrams and the standard deviation is 20 milligrams. If the null hypothesis states that the mean is equal to 230 tested against the alternative hypothesis, which states that the mean is not equals 230 at 5% level of significance with the assumption that the cholesterol of chicken egg is normally distributed and suppose that the test statistic is 1,37. Find the p-value. What do you need to do here? What is it that you have to do? You don't have to calculate the z stack. They already calculated it. They told you that it is z, it is equals to 1,37. All they want is for you to find the p value. So, in order for you to find the p value, do you know what you need to do if it is a two tail? We did this last week, Saturday. If it's a two tail, you multiply it by two. You're going to multiply by two, and since our z value is positive, what do we need to do? 
One minus. One minus the value we're going to find on the table. So you just need to go to the table and go find 1,37. On the positive side, look for 1,37. 1, 1,3 on the side and 7 at the top. And that will give you 1,9147. That's what we need to do. So it will be 2 times 1 minus 0, 0,9147. I hope I'm doing it right. Okay, and what is the answer that you get? It's option number five. It will be two times one minus point nine one four seven, which is zero comma. 0,1706. Just give me a sec. Okay. Let's check. Did I unmute myself? Okay, so on the next one, how many tissues oh, tissue should the Kimberly Clark Corporation package of Kleenex contain? The researcher determined that 60 tissues is the mean number of tissues during a cold. Suppose, oh, during a cold. Suppose a random sample of 100 Kleenex users yield, yielded the following data on the number of tissues used during a cold. The mean average, the sample mean was 52. The sample standard deviation was 22. Suppose the alternative you wanted to test was that the mean is less than 60. If we know that, state the correct rejection region for the alpha. So all what they want you to do is, based on this information, if you have to make a decision, the first thing you need to do is, what will be your critical value? By looking at the options already, I can see that they are using T, but here they are also using Z. So we need to be very sure what which one we need so that we can eliminate some of these things. So the first, the first thing you also need to remember is the population standard deviation is it given? The second thing, where will be the region of rejection if it's a less than? So you just need to make sure that to remind yourself to draw yourself a picture and write those less than or greater than and say where it is. And if you forgot, at the middle it's zero, therefore anything this side is negative, anything this side is positive. Those are the things you always have to remember. Now, since we're doing a one tail as well, so in order for you to find the critical value, do we use T alpha divided by two or do we use T alpha? That's the one question that you need to also ask yourself. Are we doing T alpha divided by two or T alpha? One tail is T alpha. So we're doing T alpha. So are we going to have one region of rejection? Which side? The positive or the negative side? The negative side. The negative side. So it means we can ignore that side. So if it's T alpha, we need to go find the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1. So what is our critical value? Our alpha, 
like they given it to you they said it's 0 0.05 degrees of freedom what is our n oh, n is 199 n is n is 100 minus 1 which means our degrees of freedom will be 99 so you need to go to the z the t table and go to 99 and let's look for 0 0.05 which is the second column and 1.60 so our critical value it's 1.66 how many sixes two sixes 660 so yeah they used the four de decimal table it's fine it gives us an idea so it means only those two options should be the right options so we know that that one will, no will not be correct that one will not be correct and that one will not be correct also you must when you make a decision you must also make use of the sign so this one says it will be in the greater side and this one says it will be in the less than side. Which one is correct between the two? Because we know that our critical oh, is you. right. So it, will be in the, it actually is going to be in the negative side. And therefore it will be option, option two. If you get a question like this in the exam, will you know how to tackle it? It might not be like this. They might ask you to make a conclusion or make a decision. Um, so you just need to ask yourself follow up questions in terms of how do we get there to make a decision? There are several things that you need to always remember. The most important one is the alternative hypothesis testing. The sign that sits there tells you how you're going to make a decision. Because if you would have chosen number one, you would have said it is in the side, on the positive side. So we know that it is in the negative side because it's a less than, it's in the lower side. And you need to know how to find the critical value because if you don't know how to find the critical value, you might choose the wrong critical value as well. The other important thing is when you find the critical value, you must look at the information that you are given. If it's especially when it's for the mean, whether you're given the population standard deviation or whether you're given the sample standard deviation. Okay. I'm going to leave you to do this one on your own. It should be quick and easy. Do you want me to go to the table? For those who don't have... I'm not yet, I'm just reading the question. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm done writing my notes. Okay. Do you want me to go to the question, to the table? Okay. Silence means you all have everything you need.
what are we doing? Which what test are we doing? A two tail or one tail? Single tail. We're doing a one tail. And we are also given what? Our Z value. And we are we told our Z value because we're doing a less than is negative two point four two. If we go to the T the Z table, we go to the negative side table. Sorry, I just want to remove all my markings. We're looking for minus 2.42. Minus 2.42. So when you go to the negative side, you can see that we actually are looking at the smaller portion. Yeah? So negative four, two. So what else do we need to do in order to confirm our answer? What did we get? Zero comma zero seven eight. Zero comma. Zero seven eight. Is that the answer that we're looking for? Or is there something that we still need to do? Sorry, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. um, how do you tell again uh, when it's a one tile or a two tile? Alternative. The sign on your alternative hypothesis tells you what you need to be doing. So if that's a, if that's a not equals two, then it's a two tail test. Yes. Remember? Your alternative sign is the most important sign. So we we know what our Z value is. We went to this table, we found our table value. My question is, is this the final answer or is there something that we need to do? 20 minus one from the answer. But the table contains the Z value of less than a value. And we know if we want to find the probability, we always find the probability will be the value we find on the table. In this instance, our Z value is of a less than. Do we still need to minus because we're not looking for Z for greater than. Only for greater than, that's where we say one minus the table value. So you need to always, always at the back of your mind, remember the things that you've learned in chapter six or study unit six and study unit seven, where we dealt with the table, cumulative standardized normal distribution table for a one tail test where it's less than, only when it's, po when it's positive. And I said this, for a less than, for a less than, we are looking for that value and these values are those values. When it's positive, these values are the bigger side values, but we're looking for this smaller one. That's why we say one minus the value we find on the table in order for us to find the white area, the smaller side. On the negative side of the table, it contains the less than, which are the values that we are actually looking for. So the probability you find here, which is our p value. So this is probability when we were working with normal distribution, chapter six, chapter seven, we were talking about probabilities. In hypothesis testing, we talk, this are what we call our p values, which are probability values, p values. So it's just the name acronym that they use for them. So if we are given a one tail test for a less than in an alternative hypothesis, and we are given a negative Z test 
we need to find the p-value, which we can represent it as z of less than negative 2.42. If we go to the table and look for negative 2,42, we find the value. The value we find on the table, that will be the value we are looking for. So, and we did this last week. I'm going to repeat it again. So, so the answer is 0, 0,78. But for interest sake, let's just want to clear, erase all of this. So for the hypothesis alternative, I'm only going to concentrate on the alternative. If the sign is in the alternative, if the sign is not equal, if the sign is not equal, and we need to find the p-value and the z-value, now I have the z-value, if the z-value is positive, we're going to let's start with the negative. If the z value is negative and if the z value is positive, so for a two tail, so this is a two tail hypothesis test. If the value is positive, then we say two times the table value. If it's negative, sorry, when it's negative, we say two times the table value. If the value is positive, we say two times one minus the table value because we go into the bigger side of the table, the bigger portion. For a less than, or let's start with the greater than, so that we get to the less than late. For where the alternative hypothesis, for where it's an alternative hypothesis, and our z value is negative, then we say one minus. Uh, if the value is negative, we just read the table value. Because anyway, it will give us, uh, let's do it this way, let's draw this. On the Z table, so the negative side of the table contains this small side of this thing. That's the negative side. Or maybe I should not draw it separate so that we can. You, if, Liz, if you want to draw, draw it, if, you want, if you want to draw that graph, you must put it on on top of, for example, your Z negative or your Z positive columns. Yes, that's what I want to do actually. Mm. So let's use another color for it. Oh no, I can use the same color. So this on the table we look at for in all negative values on the table it's always going to look for those values there so that is that but when we make a decision here yeah, that's why we multiply by two because then we we taking into consideration that area and that area so because that's why we're doing two times because we take that small portion we might we do it we split it into two go to the negative and the positive. So the negative and the positive, they share that. On the positive side of the table, so if we have this, so that you do understand that. So it takes the bigger portion we don't want the bigger portion we just want the smaller portion and that is why we say one minus the value on the table because all what we want is to get 
that area and that area. That's all what we want. We want to take this white shaded area and represent it on both sides. On the negative side and on the positive side. That is why it is this minus one which will give us the blue area. Oh, sorry, the white area. The one minus, which will be minusing this red area. So this is the the red shaded area. That is why we say one minus that shaded area so that we can just get the white area, which this will be our white area on that bigger on this. That's all what we want. So the small areas is the white area. So on the greater than, the same thing. When the value is negative, it's fine because it goes to the negative side of the table, but since it is negative on this side, since it's negative on that side, so we're looking for this area. Even though we, we're getting the area from the negative side of the table, we can represent it from the positive side. So our um, critical value will be on the positive side. If the Z value is positive, then remember we, we're talking about the big area. We're going to say one minus the value we find on the table, which we only are interested in the white area. So this is just that white area there. So that is why we subtract the red area so that we can get the white area, the value of the white area. So that is what we are doing with this. So for a less than, already for the less than, for the less than, we know that these are the table value we don't have any problem with that. But when it is less than, but we go to the positive side, the Z value is positive. So this is the same, we still, so this one, the shaded area will be on this side for the negative. Sorry, I don't know how to draw. I've never been good with drawing drawing even from school so on the if our z is positive if our z is positive then because our z value is positive it will still be representing the bigger shaded area but we're looking for the smaller shaded area so we're going to say one minus the table value as well but also we're going to be looking at that small area. So our p-value will be that. Remember the p-value is the probability which is the area underneath the curve. And the area underneath the curve, we only interested in that small portion of it, not the bigger portion of it. Because the table contains the bigger Ocean. Okay, so that is our hypothesis testing questions. This will be your last question. Let me just see how many more questions did we have that you can go and look. So 14, 15, 16, 17 you can do on your own as you practice. So this will be the last question that we tackled for today.
um, Lizzie, you must please stay by the question, eh? Oh, Phil. I said, believe. Hi, Winnie. Are we winning? You want more time? Oh, are we there yet? We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> Left with five minutes. Right, it's fine. I'm sure Lizzie, you can continue. Okay, let's do it together. Then you can do 14 to 17 on your own. Okay, I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to do the step one up until step six of the hypothesis test. And then you can go and answer your, the questions yourself. So in the statement, we are told that the manager reported that there is a decline in the difference between 78. So our step one is to state our null hypothesis, which will state that the population proportion is equals to 78%. But what the researcher wants to prove is a decline, which is a less than, we cannot put it in the um, null hypothesis, but it will go into our alternative hypothesis. So our population proportion will be less than 78%. That's step number one done. Step number two was to state what we're given. We are given the sample proportion of 76, which is our P. We are given our N and we are given alpha. I've already stated those. Step number three is to state what we're doing. It's a Z test, and this is a one-tailed test. 
it's a one tail test and we're doing a z test step number four is to find the critical value let me see if i need the critical value for this question i don't necessarily need the critical value but if i was going to look for the critical value the critical value would have been z z alpha which is z of 0 0.05 and you know what z of 0 0.05 is because uh, now i can't see the chat the picture is oh i can't i see all the pictures okay where is that we said z alpha of 0 0.05 is 1.645 so if if we were finding the critical value we would find it as 1.645 um that is step number four step number five is for us to calculate the test statistic and i did put the formula i don't know why did i remove it z stat of p minus pi divided by pi times one minus pi divided by this by n substituting the value our p is 76 0 comma 76 minus 0 0.78 divided by the square root of 0 0.78 times 1 minus 0 0.78 divided by n which is 200 did you calculate this what did you get you didn't calculate it i can go and calculate it negative 0 0.68 negative 0 0.68 0 0.76 minus 0 0.78 divide by the square root of 0 0.78 times 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.78 close bracket, divide by 200. Negative 0, comma, negative 0, comma, 68. We need to go find the p-value. Since our uh, alternative hypothesis says it's less than, and we're using a negative, finding a p-value, so my p-value will be the table value. Coming to the negative side, find negative 0, 0,68, and 8 is the second last column, which is 0, 0,2483. 0, 0, 0,2483. I need to make a decision. Making a decision, I can use the p-value and the alpha. I know what alpha is. Let's see. They gave us our alpha is 0, 0,5. So if I put the alpha of 0, 0,5, is this less than or equal? So this is greater than, therefore I can say, safely say, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now I can come and answer all these questions that they post. Because it's easy and quicker for me, because if I looked at the questions, I can see that they ask me most of the things that I need to know about hypothesis testing. I can do the hypothesis testing quick, quick, and then come and answer the question. The first question was, test the, the test statistics is 0, 0,6. You've calculated it. That is correct. The p-value is 0, 0,2482. Anyway, so probably maybe it's a typing error with the last digit. That is the correct answer. C, 
the alternative hypothesis is that the population proportion is not equal to 0 0,8, but I know that they said it's a decline, so it cannot be a two-tail because it says it's not equal, therefore it means they're saying it is a two-tail. D, the null hypothesis is not rejected. I just made that conclusion. It says do not reject the null hypothesis. We can conclude that it's not significantly different from 78 because we're not rejecting it. And that's how you answer the hypothesis questions. Quick and easy. As long as you know your six steps of hypothesis testing, you should be able to answer the hypothesis questions. For example, if you come here already, all these are six steps of hypothesis. Null hypothesis, test statistic, critical value, p-value, conclusion. Null hypothesis, critical value, test statistic, p-value, conclusion. All of them are in all those options. So do the, the six steps of hypothesis testing, regardless of whether you're doing for the mean or the proportion, as long as you see the answers options like this, quickly on the site, you do the six steps, you come here, you answer the question, quick and easy. Same, critical value test statistic, p-value, uh, making a conclusion. Same, oh, this one is asking if you're doing a two-tailed test, critical value test statistic, p-value, make a conclusion all those steps because your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is stated already there. Null hypothesis, alternative, uh, test statistic, critical value, make conclusion. All the six steps of hypothesis done in one question. And that concludes our time together. I'm, I'm not sure if I want to see you on Wednesday. I want to give you time. I think for the next two weeks, oh, not two weeks, uh, today is, let's go to the calendar. So your assignment was due on the second, which then gives you the Wednesday and the Saturday to do the Monday assignment. But there is a possibility that it will be extended so that those who are still catching up with their assignment can catch up. But your assignment should be due probably by the 9th. So they will extend it by a week. So if you haven't received a communication, it might go out next week so that you know that. Uh, but those who haven't done their first submission of assignment four, I will urge you to start looking at your assignment four. Do your first submission. Um, those who already did their first submission, I think you are now left with one, unless if they extend and give you additional third submission. Do not rush to go and do your third, your second submission, unless if they extend it and they give you another additional um, submission. But keep safe that and then on that week of the 4th and 5th, then you can do your assignment. I'm going to cancel all the classes that we're supposed to have on those days. So next week, Wednesday and Saturday, I am going to give you time to catch up and work through your assignment for. There's no need for us to hurry because uh, you have the rest of August to do the last two chapters, which we will do together as well, the same way. So I'm going to give you that, that week to do your assignment. Do you also need the week of the fourth to do your assignment? Because on the week of the fourth, we can start with the new chapters. I need to hear from you. I think we can start with the new chapters on the on the week fourth. of the fourth. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Um, no, let 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 us uh, let us not because there are uh, one chapter is very short. So we will do. Okay, I'm going to give you two weeks. We can come online if you want for an hour. If you have any question, I will I will be online on those Saturdays and Wednesdays for an hour to answer any questions that you have. We can use those sessions as a question and answer session to iron out any issues, any doubt that you still have, any challenges that you still have. We can use those two weeks to do that. So the next time I will see you for class will be on the 11 when we do chi uh, when we do chi square test. So we will cover the chi square test and do the activity of chi square test on the 14th. Then we will do logistic regression. Oh, sorry, regression, uh, regression on the 18th and then we do the activities on regression on the 21st and then the 25th and 28th we will do activities relating to both of those chapters right agree yes yes yes, I agree. I agree. yes. so i'm going to give you time to to work through your assignment because we don't have to hard to to rush on this one. Uh, uh, sorry, Lizzie. Yes. Are you saying on Wednesday 